Okay, I'm going to apologize in advance for the fact that I'm going to read this from my phone as I have never publicly spoken before. So bear with me here. And masks are always fun. <laughs> so first of all, my name is Kathleen Fleischman and I am a Bridge of Hope alumni from about uh, 11, 12 years ago. Um, I would share my entire story with you, but you'd have to get a room here, so I'll just start where Bridge of Hope and I intersect. Um, my partner of 13 years struggled with alcoholism, and as a result, he would be um, aggressive, angry, and, and it was very hard to predict what mood he was going to be in. Um, things finally came to a head one evening, and it was clear. I had no more time left. It was time to act. I had to leave. So I went to my son's room and instructed him while still in his pajamas that we were going on a, an adventure. I said, grab a change of clothes for tomorrow, toothbrush, and take your favorite toy, which happened to be a stuffed animal my mother had made for him when he was born. As he was doing that, I got together some of my personal effects, um, special documentation I was going to need, and change of clothes and toiletries. And we headed to the car. I threw some blankets and pillows in the back of an old SUV, and off we went. We drove about 40 miles north to the home where my mother was living with my brother since my father had passed away. I did not want to be there. I parked about 100 feet away from the entrance to the house, just on the other side of the driveway, as I did not want them to know I was there, I didn't want to disrupt anyone, it was very late. But in truth, it was mostly because I was embarrassed. Um, how was I going to explain to my mother and my little brother how I had gotten to this place in my life? No plan, no money, and nowhere to go. I spent the night with my son in the back of that car stargazing and at first it was exciting and fun to see him call out constellations that he was pretty sure he knew though I have my doubts and as I watched his excitement grow I felt smaller and smaller I felt like a failure I had I had failed him how was this all going to turn out in, in a short time it seemed he picked up on my change of mood and he turned to me and he asked me, are we ever going home? I said, no, baby, we can never go back there. The following morning, I knocked on the door and over coffee, I confessed to my mother and my brother and his family just how bad things had gotten. And they were all quick to agree that going back there just was not an option. It wasn't safe. So what to do now? My mother remembered a conversation she'd had with a family friend whose daughter had found herself in a similar situ situation some time ago. And she mentioned some bridge or hope or something. She said, I, I don't remember the name. We reached out to that friend later, and soon we were in contact with a gentleman named Steve from Bridge of Hope. Shortly after, I met with Steve, and he told me what I could expect if I were to participate with Bridge of Hope and what would be expected of me if I partic participated in the program. I was desperate, scared, but I was in. If he'd have me, if they'd have me, I was going to participate. It wasn't long until Steve indicated that I'd be meeting with what was then referred to as mentors. and. You guys call them neighboring volunteers, but I call them my friends. And uh, I was going to meet at Phyllis Frankhauser's house. I was mortified. <laughs> what did I have in common with these folks? They had done everything right in life, and uh, somehow I hadn't. Over the course of the next few years, I came to know them as my friends. They were there for everything. Uh, when I struggled to make a decision, when I struggled to act, if I didn't know what to do, they truly were family to us. They would make sure that my son was awake 
he was the uh, epitome of a latchkey kid. I worked very early hours and more than one job. So they'd make sure he didn't miss the bus, make sure he had a packed lunch, make sure he was safe. I don't know what we'd have done without them. They'd go with us to the bookstore or on hikes. Um, we'd prepare recipes together, share recipes. I make the best lasagna, we determined that. But they were always right there, ready to help support us, never to give us handouts, but a hand up. So we knew that we were capable because once we were out of the program, we needed to feel like we were capable of doing this. And we were. And because of their time and efforts, we're forever changed. And as indicated in my introduction, I have four children. Three of them are older than my son, but this is a ripple effect. They saw the changes in me and they are benefactors of those changes. It, doesn't, it wasn't just me and it wasn't just my son. It was my entire family, anyone who was close to me, friends, etc. They saw a restored sense of self and they all benefited as well. And I remain eternally grateful to Bridge of Hope, to the individual ladies who took the time and allowed us to be a part of their lives and they will, for as long as they want, be a part of ours. So I thank you all for being here because time is a commodity and once spent, you cannot get it back. And you've spent yours here today. They spent theirs with me and I'm happy to spend mine here today. So thank you for being here.